In his 1994 memoir A Drinking Life, Pete Hamill, an American journalist and author, delves into his early years, tracing the origins and progression of his alcoholism until his decision to quit in 1972. Notable for his journalistic contributions to the New York Post and the New York Daily News, Hamill's literary repertoire spans novels, short stories, essays, and non-fiction works, establishing him as a prominent figure in 20th century American journalism. Born in 1935 to working-class Irish immigrants in Brooklyn, New York, Hamill grew up in the shadow of his father Billy, a laborer who coped with his troubles through drinking. Hamill's mother, on the other hand, was a nurturing presence, managing the household with limited resources and showering her children with affection. Hamill vividly portrays his Brooklyn upbringing, involving street games like stickball, comic book exchanges, education at Holy Name of Jesus Elementary School, administered by nuns, witnessing the Dodgers parade, and newspaper deliveries. He learned to defend himself in challenges and undertook dares, even recounting a perilous leap between tenement roofs. The close-knit community offered limited prospects, seemingly destined for a repetitive cycle of marrying local partners, menial jobs, anger, and aging akin to their fathers. Despite his vow to avoid emulating his father's behavior, Hamill was already engaging in secretive drinking as a young boy. Although he was resolute about not becoming his father, he couldn't envision an adult life devoid of alcohol. His thirst for knowledge led him to the public library, where he glimpsed a broader world, Fueled by curiosity and intellect, he secured a scholarship to a prestigious high school in Manhattan. However, a sense of guilt over leaving his community started to weigh on him. This guilt-driven drinking escalated, leading him to quit school at 16 and secure a job at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Reflecting on this period, he realized he had unknowingly embraced the drinking culture, perceiving it as a crucial aspect of masculinity, an entryway to enigmatic realms of desire a bond that cemented friendships, a treat following toil, and a source of solace in the face of mortality or defeat. Drinking granted him courage, self-assurance, comfort, mirth, an elixir that convinced him dreams could materialize. Yet, he remained captivated by visions of broader horizons. Enrolling in an art school in Manhattan, he embarked on a dual existence, courting a life model in the city while also maintaining a relationship with a devout Catholic girl from his Brooklyn enclave. Struggling to reconcile these diverse threads, art school, the Navy Yard, his neighborhood, family, friends, alcohol, and relationships, he found himself tangled in a web of complexities. During his service in the Korean War, Hamill's encounter with the works of Hemingway and Fitzgerald ignited his passion for writing. At 25, he boldly penned a letter to the editor of the New York Post, challenging the notion that journalism was reserved for the formally educated. This act led to his recruitment by the Post, propelling him into the realm of burgeoning newspaper professionals. Married and fathered to two daughters, he reported from various corners of the world, Spain, Ireland, Mexico, seeking what he termed the GGP or the Great Good Place to Settle Down. Returning to New York, he carved his niche by crafting columns that encapsulated urban life, cementing his reputation. Yet, his consumption of alcohol continued to surge. He honed his journalistic craft through convivial drinks with fellow reporters, ferreting out stories in bars, and interspersing work with recreational imbibing. Gradually, his life began to unravel. An overt affair with the actress Shirley MacLaine spelled the end of his marriage. He came to realize that his own children viewed him with the same trepidation he had felt toward his father. Mornings found him grappling with memory lapses from the previous night. His hands quivered, and basic words eluded his spelling abilities. The turning point arrived on the eve of 1972 when Hamill experienced a blinding surge of insight. Gazing at the drink he held, he knew it marked his final indulgence. He divulges that initially, his focus centered on relinquishing just one drink the next in line. Observing his friends imbibe proved challenging, particularly witnessing his father's consumption, yet by standing firm against temptation, he unearthed some of the motives behind his own drinking. He acknowledged that a portion of his drinking served to alleviate the guilt stemming from transcending his humble origins. This realization made resistance more manageable. Seated among friends at a bar, the urge to perform waned. As he recounts, the sensation of performance ebbed. I started hearing stories I'd heard many times before. I was polite. I listened. 
I laughed at the punchlines. But I didn't drink. Hamill concludes his narrative by recounting a journey he undertook in the mid-1970s, a visit to the old neighborhood of his upbringing. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.